الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم All praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify Allah and we give thanks to him for his bounties his favors and his blessings upon us I testify that there is none to be worshiped but Allah he's alone and he has no partner and I testify that prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us as believers that we need to fulfill our responsibilities. We need to fulfill our obligations unto our creator and unto his creation. And that uh, we always be in that state of readiness, in that state of uh, 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 preparation, that we are always ready for the time when we will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone wants to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he says, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And I not accept that you die submissive. You want to meet with Allah in a submissive state, in a state of obedience. We have been witnesses to so many, uh, to so many catastrophes. We, we have been witnesses to so many disasters. There has been earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, uh, natural disasters. And, and we have also been witnesses to uh, disasters where uh, people lose their lives, people are, are suffering, people are going through difficulties, hardships, trials and tribulations and, and as we we look at what has happened over months we, we we have seen families wiped out from the face of the earth we we have seen uh, entire generations returning to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it is in an environment where there are only Muslims or an environment in which there are Muslims and non-Muslims, we have seen so many have uh, um, that connection that they had with one another, that connection that uh, um, brought them close to each other. We, we have seen that all that has been lost and so today my dear brothers and my dear sisters I, I want to say that we are fortunate we are blessed in that uh, many of us we we still have uh, if not all our family members we have most of our family members with us we have seen people who are on the verge of being united, 
being married and one partner or would-be partner has returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we, we have seen children uh, returning to Allah and their parents are left behind. And we have seen parents returning and children being left behind. And, and so think about how blessed we are that we still have our other half, those who are married, still have your spouse. They're, they're those who still have their mothers and fathers, their parents. They're those who still have their children. They're those who still have many of their extended families. And it's like I said, even in some cases we have seen not only the immediate, but even the extended families have been wiped out. And, and so consider this a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Family is, is very important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And uh, it, it is uh, a, a divine institution established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he tells us in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّ وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And from among his signs, the signs of Allah, is that he has created for you from among yourselves spouses. Look at the, the divinity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established this institution where he brings people together. And from his signs is that he has created for you spouses for, for what reason? So that you may dwell with them in peace and tranquility. He is the one, Allah, who sets between you affection, love, and compassion. Verily, in that are signs for those who reflect. And so, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to look at family as being important in that we should always strive to establish a loving, supported family unit, that we, we should do everything possible to make sure that uh, we maintain that love and that support within our families. The, the family, it's... Uh, there for the preservation of society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he shows us the connectedness of the people. And he says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaqu rabbakumu alladhi khalaqakum min nafsi wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to people in the Qur'an, O oh people, be dutiful unto your Lord. Fear Allah, the one who created you from a single soul, created you from Adam, and from him, his wife, Hawa, and from the two of them scattered countless men and women on the earth. O people, fear Allah and reverence the wombs that bore you, for verily Allah is ever watching over you. And so this teaches us about unity and it teaches us about the interconnectedness of humanity. And, and that's uh, fostered more and more through the institution of family. We, we are blessed that, yes, we have families. 
we, we need to make sure that the respect the rights, the responsibilities that are due to families, that we do give it to them. And that is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Khayrukum khayrukum li ahlihi wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you are those who are best to their families. And, and he says, I am best to my family, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we, we need to look at making sure that there is harmony and there is fairness in our families. When we look at family, we, we look, look at the upbringing of children. They, they must be raised and nurtured in the right way. And, and, and that's a responsibility. You don't look at your families as just Allah has given families to us and that's the end of it. We have responsibilities. Give them their rights. Give them that respect. Uh, and, and when it comes to children, it is said in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, hu anfusakum wa ahlikum naru. O you who believe, save yourselves, protect yourselves and your families, that your children from the fire of hell. And so we, we, we look to, to strengthen our families, our children, physically, emotionally, and, and, and spiritually. We, we need to make sure that uh, our children, they are being brought up in, the, in an environment in which they stay connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be like others, those who are, you know, lament, those who have returned and people would wish that they have done what was required of them. Allah has blessed us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. As, as, as you think and you reflect upon people who have lost everything, think about this great blessing that you have, each and every one of us, we have, in terms of our families, whether it is our spouse, whether it is our children, our parents, we, we, we have been blessed and we need to make sure that uh, we stay connected with our families. There, there are some practices that need to be maintained by each and every one of us when it comes to uh, our family members. You know, have that if you want to build the family and make sure it's strong, have that open communication. Always listen. Always express thoughts. Always, you know, have that understanding that people make mistakes and we should always look for resolutions. We should always look to solve problems and so it, it, look at always striving to resolve conflicts that's how a family stays together if you keep it in and, and don't talk about it you don't express your thoughts and feelings you don't communicate and, and you can't find a way to resolve conflicts then it destroys the family we, we should always have that respect and show kindness, be gentle and loving unto one another. There is no room for hatred and enmity and dislike and jealousy when it comes to our family members. Yes, some will be blessed with more than others. Some will be granted more than others. And it doesn't mean that we should be jealous of that individual 
or we should have hatred for that individual, or we should be, you know, uh, be enemies just because one has progressed more than the other. And we see it so often among families that people just segregate and they, they, they are uh, disjointed, they, they are disunited just because others maybe have more than, the, than, than their family members. And so we, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, he, he tells us, uh, or this is in Hadith al-Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, uh, he, he is the one who is tayyib. Inna Allah tayyib. La yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is tayyib, he is good, he is all about purity, and so Allah does not accept anything except that which is good, and that which is, uh, it, you know, signifies that purity. Remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we, we, we need to make sure that uh, if we show that kindness and that compassion and that uh, respect to one another, to our family members. Sometimes we show kindness and that respect to strangers and we don't show it to our family members. It is important if we want to strengthen this family that we are blessed with, we still have, that we spend quality time with our families. We spend quality time with our families. So often we, we spend time with others, and don't spend that time with our family. Remember the, 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 the saying that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he acknowledged when it, that conversation between two companions and the, it, it is said, Inna li rabbika alayka haq wa inna li nafsika alayka haq wa inna li ahlika alayka haq Verily, your Lord has a right over you, and your body has a right over you, and your family has a right over you. So give each one its due rights. And if we were to reflect, you know, to ponder upon the, the quality time that we spend elsewhere and the quality time that we spend with our families, Sometimes, you know, you, you need to really uh, evaluate and see if it is the same, if it is less, if it is more when it comes to our families. And, and that quality time, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it, it can be spent over meals. How often do we eat with our families? How often do we share a meal together, husband, wife, children, mother, father? We, we, we should get into that habit of making sure that there, there is some time set aside that we can, you know, share a meal with our family members. It's, we live in a very challenging world, but if we make the effort we will find time to at least share one meal if it is not every day, a few days of the week or on the weekends that we, we sit together and we have a meal together. Uh, how often do we, you know, go out with our families, outings? How often do we you know, make sure that rituals and practices are, are done together with our family members. This, when we do this, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it fosters love, it fosters understanding, and it brings unity among us. Family, in order to stay together, need to support each other 
uh, emotionally, morally, and financially. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, As-sadaqa ala al-miskin sadaqa wa ala the rahim sadaqa wa sallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, when you give sadaqa to a poor, it is considered sadaqa, it is considered charity. When you give it to a family member, it is charity and it is also the joining of relationship, maintaining relationship. So, so don't think that you can give sadaqa to your families. Yes, you can give sadaqa to your families and it's encouraged because when it is being given to the miskin, one thing is mentioned, it is sadaqa. When it is being given to your family members, it is sadaqa and it is the maintaining of relationship, family relationship. It, it is uh, important that as families, we, we strive to be more connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you just heard about classes, whether they're virtual or whether they are in person. How often do we sit with our families and join a session where we can increase our Islamic knowledge? Where we can strengthen our Iman? You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he talks about faith and the strength of faith. And he says, Al Mu'minul Qawi Khayrun wa Ahabbu ilallahi min al Mu'minid Da'if. The strong believer is better and more loved by Allah than the weak believer. In an Iman, it's it's the focus, the foundation that a family needs to work towards. Because that's what matters, not only in this world, but in the world hereafter. You know, when you see families dying together, and they are strong in faith, indeed they have that full commitment and conviction in terms of their belief, you, you, you're happy for them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us that those who believe and their families join them in, in that iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them together on the day of judgment they will be united so we, we're not looking for a temporary happiness and comfort when it comes to our families, you love your mother, you love your father, you love your children, your son, your daughter, you love your spouse, your husband, your wife. What guarantee do you have that the same happiness that you are sharing with them in this world, that you will share the same happiness in the world hereafter? And that is why it's so important that Muslim families strive together to increase their faith, to maintain that belief, that Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only keep them united in this world but Allah will unite them in the world hereafter because of their Iman, because of their faith. That's so important my dear brothers and my dear sisters. So every time you look at your spouse, Every time you look at your children, every time you look at your mothers, your fathers, you, you, you want to make sure that there is some happiness that is brought to you because you're not thinking only about this moment. You're not thinking only about this time. You're thinking about the world hereafter, that here is a Muslim child. Here is a believing husband. Here is a believing wife. Here is a believing father, believing mother. That you, you are, it brings comfort and joy to you that inshallah that we will all be reunited 
when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we need to pray for, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Like the believers they prayed for before us. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina kurrata ayun. Wajalna lil muttaqina imama. Our Lord, grant us from our spouses and our children, those who will be the comfort of our eyes. And make us leaders of the muttaqin, the, the muttaqun or the, the, the pious, the righteous ones. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, in, in, in life, sometimes we, we think only about our immediate and we don't think about our extended. Remember that it is not only mothers and fathers, it's not only sons and daughters, it, 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 it is uh, not only husband and wife, but it's also our grandparents, our aunts and our uncles, our nieces and our nephews, our in-laws. These are our family members. What contact do we have with them? What relationship do we have with them? How are we making a difference in their lives or they're making a difference in our lives? You know, it is said that in Hadith Al-Qudsi, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying, Ana Rahman, wa hadhihi ar-Rahim, shaqaqtu, shaqaqtu laha isman min ismi, faman wasala, faman wasalaha, wasaltuhum, waman qata'aha, qata'atuhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that He is a Rahman. He is the most merciful. And then He says that this womb, Rahamim, which comes from the same letters like a Rahman, He says, I have taken it from my name. He whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, he who maintains family ties, I will maintain relationship with him. And he who cuts off family ties, I will cut off relationship with him. I imagine if you are being cut off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It may seem that it is not a bother in this world, doesn't mean anything in this world. But if you are cut off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, think about the world hereafter. And what will be our fate? And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, indeed we are blessed regardless if we only have some family members or all of our family members with us we are blessed when we look at others who have lost everything who have lost an entire generation they've lost all their family members think about it that indeed it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let us make sure that we make the best use of what Allah has blessed us with our families as you look back reflect ponder evaluate Have I distanced myself from my family? Or have I been brought closer to my family? Do I need to strengthen my relationship with my family? 
Do I need to do more than I have done in the past? As you think about a new year, and you, you reflect upon all the natural disasters and the man-made disasters, and so much having been lost, let us think about ourselves, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and think about what Allah has blessed us with, what we still have, and how we will make sure that we show gratitude and we show that thanks for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran, لَإِن شَكَّرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And if you are thankful, I will certainly increase you. I will grant you more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's granting of more will come with happiness, with comfort, with joy, peace and tranquility. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to you know, understand His blessings and to cherish our families, those who are still with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, have mercy upon us. May He give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of the hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters just as a reminder once again in terms of our immediate family let us always show respect and kindness. Let us support them in any way we can, whether it is emotional, physical, or financial support. Let us make sure that we fulfill our responsibilities by educating in giving the right type of training and upbringing to those children that Allah has blessed us with. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. Every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for those who come under his or her authority. And so that's what we are being told by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it comes to our extended family we need to maintain ties maintain ties with our grandparents with our aunts our uncles our nieces our nephews our in-laws make sure that there is a strong connection between us and them we should be able to offer whatever support and assistance we can to them. Uh, we, you know, one of the things that we, we need to always do is, uh, and this is a sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he tells us that the haqq that a Muslim has upon another Muslim, right, that when someone invites you, you accept their invitation. And so if you want to help to maintain that relationship with family, you know, they invite you to weddings, they invite you to akika, they invite you to you know, joyful events. So long as this is being done within the confines of the deen, then participate with them, be with them, because that helps to 
build the family relationship. Um, it, it's uh, important that sometimes we, we don't even, when it comes to our extended family, sometimes we don't even think about this. Uh, we only think about our immediate. Islam teaches us that even our extended families, they have a right over our wealth. When it comes to inheritance, they also have a, a right. If you don't have a mother and father life and you have grandparents, grandparents will inherit you. There, there are other people in your extended family, depending on the circumstances, they will be part of your inheritance. And so we, we, we need to make sure that um, we, we also look at our extended families and our obligations towards them. We, we, we talk about making sure that we communicate with our immediate, we also need to communicate with our extended. And in the world that we live in today, it has been so easy for us to communicate. You have, uh, you know, uh, instant messaging. You have video, cha video chats. You, you, you can call, you can visit, you know. These are ways in which you maintain that relationship. We, we can also make sure that when it comes to our family members, and for, this is not only for a family, but for everyone. Always remember people in your dua. Always pray for them. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said when, when you, you pray for someone, an angel is appointed by your side. Whatever you pray for that person, the angel says, Amin. And the angels say, may you have the same. So whatever good you do, you pray for, the angel is also saying, may you have the same that you have prayed for for your brother. So don't pray for bad things for people. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was asked once that you pray that Allah curse these people. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Verily Allah has not sent me la'anan. He has not sent me to, as a curse. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent me rahmah. It, 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 he has sent me as a mercy. So I look to bringing mercy to people. To, to being merciful unto people. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, as uh, I said at the very beginning, we have witnessed so much trials and tribulations and challenges and we continue to witness. Remember, Allah has blessed us. We still have our families with us. Make sure that you give that right to them that they deserve. Make sure that you fulfill your obligations unto your families. We all want to be reunited when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us make sure that we strive to maintain and strengthen the iman that we have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. May he give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are suffering in all parts of the world, especially our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring relief unto them and to grant them victory. As those who have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and have mercy upon them and that Allah grant them Jannatul Firdaus. Those of our brothers and sisters who are sick, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them shifa, to grant them cure from their illnesses. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease 
and to keep us safe and protected. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على أبدك ورسولك محمد وأرض الله من خلفائه الأربع أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعليم ونستة الباكين والبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم منصر عبادك المستضعفين في غزة اللهم منصر عبادك المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم منصر عبادك في كل مكان اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم السلام